In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice different applications of the Pythagorean theorem. In example A, it says, what is the area of the isosceles triangle? So remember, isosceles triangle means two sides are congruent. We can see that two sides are marked as congruent, so this side over here must be 9. And we know to know that the area of any triangle is 1 half times the base and the height. So far, we know that the base of this triangle is going to be 14. We can see that right here, but we don't know the height. So let's just draw in where it should be. So this would be the height. Now, we've created two congruent right triangles, which each have a base of 7. So what we're going to do is use the Pythagorean theorem on one of the triangles, it doesn't really matter which one, in order to figure out the missing height h. So what we're going to do is 7 squared plus h squared equals 9 squared. Remember, you always have to have the hypotenuse by itself on one side of the equation. And this is using Pythagorean theorem. So 49 plus h squared equals 81 minus 49 from both sides in order to get h squared equals 32. And when we square root that, we get that h is approximately 5.65. Now, you could leave the answer as the square root of 32 and keep it in radical form. That's fine as well. I'm just going to use decimals in this case. So our height is 5.65. Our base is 14. So we're going to plug this into our area formula. Area equals 1 half times 14 times 5.65. And when we calculate that out, we get approximately 39.55. So I'm going to make these, the symbol be approximately as opposed to equals. And then we would want units squared. All right, let's look at example B. Find the distance between 1, 5 and 5, 2. So remember the distance formula is really just the Pythagorean theorem in disguise. So instead of even thinking of the distance formula, let's try to just use the Pythagorean theorem. So we've drawn in the length we're trying to find the distance of, or the length of. What we're going to do now is create a right triangle in this picture in order to use Pythagorean theorem. Now because we're on a coordinate grid, we can count how long these legs are because they're horizontal and vertical segments. So this base leg is four units long and the height here is three and you can just count that. So what we have is three squared plus four squared equals what we're trying to figure out d, d squared. So nine plus sixteen equals d squared which means that twenty five equals d squared and d must equal 5 because 5 squared is 25. Remember also that 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. And if you remember that, it will save you some time from having to go through all of that work. So the distance between those two points is 5. Lastly, let's look at example C. Determine if the following triangles are acute, right, or obtuse. So what we're going to do in each case is test a squared plus b squared and test c squared and see how they compare. We're going to see if it's equal, in which case it would be a right triangle, if it's less than, in which case it would be an obtuse triangle, or if it's greater, in which case it'd be a, a acute triangle. So let's do a first. And first let's figure out approximately what 3 root 5 is so that we can know which side should be the hypotenuse. So 3 root 5 is approximately 6.7 using our calculator, so that won't be the potential hypotenuse. What we're going to do is test 6 squared plus 3 root 5 squared and see how that compares with 8 squared. So 6 squared is 36, 3 root 5 squared is 45, and 8 squared is 64. 36 plus 45 is 81 and 81 is greater than 64. So because a squared plus b squared is the greater side, 
this is an acute triangle because of the greater than sign. We're going to do the same thing here and see how 14 squared plus 15 squared compares with 21 squared. 14 squared is 196, 15 squared is 225, and 21 squared is 441. 196 plus 225 is 421, which means that 441 is greater. So c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared. So that means this is an obtuse triangle.